Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. There's been a terrorist attack on London Bridge yesterday where two people have passed away and three people are injured. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those that are involved and affected by this horrific attack. Terrorism is not a religion, it is an act. And it goes without saying that terrorism done in any form is wrong. All right guys, so yesterday when the attack took place, as soon as I left work, I got a call. Ali Dawa said, bro, this is what's happened. So I quickly started looking online. The coverage that I saw mostly were treating it like a knife attack or an attack of some kind. But thereafter, when they realized that the perpetrator was a Muslim, the headlines started changing and people's reactions started changing as well. And there are a few things that were interesting. The guy was apprehended on London Bridge and members of the public disarmed him before the police came and shot him. So as soon as the attack happened, Ali Dawa was there and I asked him, bro, how's the scene down there? Uh, so, Aki. so basically uh, the sentiment here, to be honest, people are just getting about their life. Uh, there's nothing being really affected. You can see behind me, the police cordon. Um, so they're, they're not letting us through there. I tried to go around, uh, but yeah. So basically, people are just getting with their life. To be honest, man, you'll see that there's um, a lot of news reporters here, TV, press. So the right wing jumped on this and were looking for any excuse to push their agenda. Whilst the rest of us were praising the police and the public for their bravery, these guys made it all about British. But ironically, one of the guy that was the hero was actually Polish. I mean, what are you gonna say now? These bloody immigrants coming to our country and defending us from terrorists. Okay, so this terrorist that was shot was jailed six years ago and get this, for planning an attack on the London Stock Exchange, on Boris Johnson's house and on the parliament. He only spent six years in prison and was given an early release and get this, he was described as a serious jihadist. And despite all of this, he was still categorized as a low to medium risk. And when he was released, he was given an electric tag yeah, on his foot. He knew he was being watched. So on the day of the attack, he was a guest at let me get this right. The Prisoner Rehabilitation Cambridge Conference. So let me get this straight here. Yeah? There's a conference that's taken place of prisoners, people that have offended. Now this guy had a knife. Scratch that, the guy had two knives. This guy managed to walk in and he had a fake suicide um, vest on, yeah? So this guy's walked in. There's loads of prisoners there. Why is there no metal detector there? Why aren't they being searched? Okay, you might argue maybe he got the knives from inside. But there's loads of prisoners there. Why on earth would they keep knives in such a place that they are able to get them? Is there no security there? But anyway, surely he's got an electronic tag. There's a bunch of prisoners in one place. Surely they're being watched. Lo and behold, a fight breaks out. Now people start getting injured and it leaks off to London Bridge. Now even before that happened, he made it clear, yo, I want to blow up this place. So okay, so not only has a fight broken out, before the fight he said he wants to blow that place up. And thirdly, there's a bunch of prisoners there. How is this not ringing alarm bells? Okay, so we've moved past that, yeah? It's now leaking outside of the venue and they're still kind of fighting each other. God knows what they're doing and they managed to reach the bridge. How this is happening and the secret services are still on their backside with their binoculars eating a donut is beyond me mate. These secret service guys are watching all of this. It's now taking place. There's like four or five members of the public there. One with a fire extinguisher, another one with a whale tusk. So they're battling with this guy and still no one's bothering to turn up. Police then arrive at three minutes past two. That's five minutes after the first emergency call. Eventually they turn up and then shoot the guy. And here's what Boris Johnson says. Anybody involved in this crime, in these attacks uh, will be hunted down and will be 
brought to justice. You don't need to hunt anyone, mate. He was literally tagged and he said exactly what he was going to do to everyone. And you still couldn't stop him. Thoughts are first with the emergency services, with the police, the bravery that they showed in going towards danger as they do. Now, of course, mate, yeah, we thank the police and we thank the emergency services. But isn't it under your government that you are cutting the funding for the police? <laughs> and you got the secret services saying, yo, we're working on 800 cases. Doing what, mate? You don't get more obvious than this. I mean, God save us with regards to those other 800 cases. Now we've got nutters everywhere, but you know what the problem is? When nutters like this are allowed to do what they do, then it leaks on everyone else. It affects our travel, it affects how we're seen, and you know what? It affects the way our country is run. A politics of fear and resentment and retrenchment takes hold. And demagogues promise simple fixes to complex problems. Because terrorism gives rise to authoritarianism, and in turn, authoritarianism gives rise to terrorism. There's a lot of conspiracies that start circulating on social media, but let's not get sucked into that yet. Yeah? Anything that you are forwarding, make sure there's evidence and you can back it up like this video. And it shows somebody on the bridge that just gets up and you got our people sharing it and going, yo, it's fake. Look, this guy's, you know, still alive. I mean, where's the proof? Can you back up and verify this footage? No, of course not. Then don't share it. And then you got another one, this tweet, where people are looking at the timing and saying, yo, this was posted before the thing actually happened. Yo, it's a conspiracy. I'm sure you're aware of something called different time zones. But agreed, there are certain inconsistencies in the narrative. I'll give you a few, yeah? The first one, two attacks have taken place on London Bridge. And in both cases, there happened to be, wait, there happened to be a BBC journalist present at that time. Here was the first case and here is the second case. In 2017, five days before the election took place, there was a terrorist attack. And now, how many days? There's like 13 days left till the election and another terrorist attack has taken place. And one other thing that I wanted to highlight, Zishan, is that it's funny these attacks always, I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but these attacks always happen uh, when there's some kind of an election or something big is happening and I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't see it as a coincidence, you know, it's, it's, you can see right behind me, but it just makes you think. Some people saying it's a false flag attack. I haven't seen evidences of it being a false flag attack, but false flag attacks have taken place. Very famous false flag attacks have taken place. Could this be a false flag attack? There's a possibility. Why not? Especially with the current climate with regards to the elections. Do I think it was a false flag attack? Not sure. I can't say. Let's not give in to fear mongering politicians who will use this to enforce their draconian laws and ask for unquestionable obedience of the public just for safety. Let's face it, this is a failure on the part of people that are supposed to be looking after us. All right, let's leave it there guys. If you like the top that I'm wearing, Sindeed. I'll put a link in the description just in case you guys wanna grab it. Till next time guys, Assalamualaikum.